Hey, Sean Jantz here. I'm going to do a quick trade plan for Monday, November 2nd, and I'm going to do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And I'm going to start here on the S&P, and every single evening, I always like to start here on the four-hour chart, or what I like to call the bird's eye view. And as far as a day trader goes, the four-hour chart is the most important chart to understand is what is our bias on this four-hour chart? Are we overbought, oversold, or are we at equilibrium? And a little bit of a recap. So I also want to touch on, everybody knows, Tuesday's election day, right? So we are, this will be a very, um, a tough week in terms of like me trying to predict, right? I mean, we're entering one of the most uh, important elections of our lifetimes. No one knows what the stock market's going to do. So this is going to be a very big week. No one knows, right? And so with that said, the only thing that we can manage is our technical analysis. Obviously, we're oversold, right? The market has cycled nicely all the way down into some um, supply from September, or sorry, demand, support, and so we're right there. I would also say we're we're really close into 3,200. That would be kind of the next logical move for these bears to continue dumping down to. And then I would say 3,000 is probably the next one. Like big round number, 3,000. It's psychological. I don't know if we'll make it this week, but if, if these bears start hammering down, either way, I think the market is bullish or bearish for either candidate. You can make a case. Literally, I have read several articles that say if Trump wins, it's bullish. Then I've read articles that said if Trump wins, it's bearish. Then I've read articles that said if Biden wins, it's bearish. Then I read articles that if Biden wins, it's bullish. It's like, holy crap. No one knows, obviously. But that's why the market exists, because we all have our opinions. Or that we, the market wouldn't exist if there wasn't all of us having all of these different uh, buying and selling, right? That's why it exists. And so with that said, I don't know what the volume would be like tomorrow. There may be a lot of people sitting on their hands just waiting for this election. We may see low volume tomorrow, so just be be um, uh, be prepared for that. When you move here to the 15-day, 15 15-minute 15 plot chart, the good news is that this market on Friday started to build a bottom. You'll notice that it touched once, cycled lower, touched again, cycled back up. So it is starting to show some demand here. And it's nice that we kind of popped off of it. So clearly we're oversold. The market continues to go higher tomorrow if it breaks set. Obviously the nice target would be up into that plus 0.5. I'm not looking for resistance until at least that plus one or plus one and a half. Even then, understand that you're gonna sell here. You're still selling a pretty oversold market. And that would still be, you know, they always say sell high, buy low. So if you're gonna sell here, you're still kind of selling near the middle of the lows of, of this two-week range, right? To the downside, it's a little cleaner. Clearly, we have this level of pockets of demand at value rate low, negative 0.5. It's already held twice. I'm going to continue to look for demand until proven otherwise. And if these bears are breaking, so if they break severely, I'm just going to let the bears have their day. And, um, you know, there is long-term, we just talked about it, there is long-term demand on 3,200. So that's not a bad idea to possibly look for some change control support because there's going to be support there from September that we just touched on, right? So that's why it's important to look at that bird's eye view because now we know 3,200 is going to come into play, right? That's why we look at bird's eye view to, to, to get that, um, to get those spots. So it's there if you want to look for it, just understand you got to ask yourself, it's like, whoa, we're continuing to form new lows, monthly lows. You know, what's going on? Do you want to catch a falling knife? got to ask yourself that. I'll make this quick on the next one because they're all pretty much setting up the same. NQ is very similar. This actually has a really decent bull target there at Thursday's POC, plus 0.5. There's a lot of volume there. And then I'm not looking for resistance until plus one, plus one and a half. And it's literally the exact same as ES. Uh, to the downside. YM, it's pretty much literally the exact same as well. And then you have RTY, literally pretty much the exact same thing. One thing about RTY though is that 1500 I know is a magnet in this market. It's exactly negative one. So you will be forming new lows if you go down there, but it's a, it's a decent level to possibly look for demand as long as you're seeing uh, good change control. So don't forget, we also have deviations on the three major Forex pairs. And so make sure that you're taking pictures of all of your trades and use the four-step trading process and post the bird's eye view, the worm's eye view, and the trade stamp in the BTG Trader Tribe so that you can get feedback from me and from others.